next pathology is a tricuspid atresia. Tricuspid atresia accounts for 1 to 3% of congenital heart diseases. In this disease, the tricuspid valve is obstructed with smallish right ventricle. Uh, there is the, uh, the patient needs an atrial septal defect for survival plus either a VSD or a PDA. Clinically, these patients present with cyanosis since birth, tachypnea and poor feeding usually manifest. There may be hypoxic spells like these of the pallo if the VSD is smallish. Physical examination will show cyanosis, a single second sound, a pan-systolic murmur of a VSD. There may be a continuous murmur of PDA. Hepatomegaly may indicate either an inadequate interatrial communication or may be a sign of congestive heart failure. ECG in these patients shows superior QRS axis deviation, left ventricular hypertrophy, and right atrial or biatrial hypertrophy. Chest X-ray shows a heart of normal size or slightly increased there is a large uh, right atrium and left ventricle. Pulmonary vasculature may be decreased in most cases. However, in patients with VSD, large VSDs, and uh, without obstruction of the pulmonary outflow, there may be increased pulmonary vasculature. Echocardiography shows the uh, pathology of absent tricuspid valve, large right atrium, and hypoplastic right ventricle, and large left ventricle. In case of restrictive atrial communication, we can demonstrate bulging atrial septum towards the left side. Uh, we can also demonstrate the size of the VSD, presence or severity of pulmonary stenosis, and whether there is transposition of great arteries as well. Cardiac catheterization is generally recommended for any patient of tricuspid atresia before planned surgical intervention because we need to demonstrate specific information like the pulmonary artery anatomy, mean pulmonary artery pressure, left ventricular function. These all are all important pieces of information before front-end surgery. If these patients are left untreated, they uh, rarely survive beyond the age of six months. Occasionally, patients with increased pulmonary blood flow, like those patients with large VSDs and unobstructed pulmonary outflow, they will develop congestive heart failure and eventually there will be pulmonary vascular obstructive disease. Management of these patients uh, involve initial medical management and uh, palliative surgical procedures. First, we should start prostaglandin E1 as soon as possible to improve uh, PDA, uh, improve oxygen saturation by maintaining PDA patency. Then, a Rushkin procedure should be done in cases uh, having uh, restrictive interatrial communication to improve the right to left uh, atrial shunt and improve oxygen saturation until patient is ready for surgical intervention. Surgical management of these patients are usually staged. The first stage is maintaining the uh, good pulmonary flow. Either by doing a BT shunt if this patient is having pulmonary stenosis or a restrictive VST or pulmonary atresia, or we can do a pulmonary artery bending in patients with a large VSD and unobstructed pulmonary flow. Then comes the second stage, which is the bidirectional gland operation. This is a shunt between the end of the superior vena cava to the side of the right pulmonary artery. It's usually performed after the age of three months. By this time, the pulmonary venous resistance is sufficiently low 
and allows venous pressure to be the driving force of the pulmonary circulation. So the, the blood flows from the uh, circulation in the upper systemic veins of the upper half of the body into the uh, pulmonary artery. This procedure usually keeps oxygen saturation around 85% and re relieves uh, the volume overload over the left ventricle. The third stage is the Fontaine operation. The original Fontaine operation was an intraatrial tube that's connecting between the uh, inferior vena cava and the uh, superior vena cava. And the uh, distal end of superior vena cava is uh, finally anastomosed to the anterior surface of the RPA uh, in front of the uh, old connection in the glen. Uh, another alternative nowadays is an extra cardiac conduit that's connecting the inferior vena cava directly to the right pulmonary artery. The Fontaine operation is usually completed when the child is around four years of age, and cardiac catheterization and angiography are very necessary to uh, exclude the risk factors uh, for Fontaine operation because the presence of two or more of these factors is a high risk uh, for Fontaine operation. First, uh, a mean pressure of the pulmonary artery of more than 18 millimeter mercury, distorted pulmonary artery branches secondary to previous shunt um, gland operations, uh, poor ventricular function, and uh, AV valve regurgitation. 